What's happening here, guys? Uh, no, the chairman can't sell all of you. Oh, look, give me a moment, guys. I'll take care of this. Hello, Mr. Chairman. It's Aussie Villain. Yeah, what are you doing, mate? Yeah, look, I know we have made a lot of sales this uh, window, and we've made a lot of money in the market. I won't deny that. But you just can't sell all the players, mate. Why? Because I need players to play the games. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain, and welcome to Season 14, Episode 1. The brand new season here at H&W World is on the impossible dream as we look to win the Champions League with our Northern Irish club. And today we'll get the new Premiership season underway. It'll be Carrick Rangers and Coleraine. So a chance to have a look at all the new signings, some of the youngsters, and just get a general sense of what the squad's looking like. And of course, transfer window is still open. There might be the opportunity to sign one or two more players as well. Now, a quick look at where we stand as a club ahead of the new season. We are professional. We are two and a half star. I'd like that to go up a little bit, but yeah, I'm not quite sure why it hasn't, to be honest. I am the manager. McQuaid, William McQuaid is still the captain. Tommy Martin is still the vice captain. Anthony Armstrong is our key player. Our young star, our, our top prospect is Thomas DeLauro. We signed him this season, of course. Hopefully, he's going to have a, a part to play for us uh, during the season. And uh, if we have a quick look here at, at Walker. Let's go to General. Finally, we have a third legend, and it is the man that should have been a legend for a long, long time now, Aaron McDay, goal-scoring extraordinaire, joins myself and Hamzad Kagbo in the legend status. Now, of course, a lot of competition. If we are ever to get a new stadium for that to be named after me, Zayanetti, uh, who, of course, departed, sadly. He is uh, he is an icon. Our favorite personnel is Armstrong and Dylan Lake. And, of course, the shock is that Mulligan, who was our goalkeeper back in the championship, long forgotten now, unfortunately, for him. Uh, but there we go. So that is uh, that is the, uh, the, the greats of the club. Facilities, we have had both our training and youth facilities upgraded. It's superb now. That means that I think next time around, I think state-of-the-art is next. So if we can upgrade them again, then we'll be as good as we can get. This could be an issue, couldn't it? Basic corporate facilities, a 3,000-seat or a 3,000-capacity, 100-seat uh, stadium. We need... Chile's been needs to improve, doesn't it? And that is probably one of the big things that is holding us back in terms of our reputation as a club. Now, if we have a quick look at the finances, as we saw last episode, we have made a lot of money through the summer. The sale of Zayanetti for $12 million to Liverpool was a big part of that. Uh, so we are in absolutely wonderful position coming into the season. And the uh, dynamics, it's not going too bad. Armstrong still wants to start more games. That's absolutely fine. Burian disappointed he couldn't join Palmer. I mean, he can go if he really wants to. I'm not going to hold him back, but that's how that looks. The hierarchy, if we can see here, it is a little bit top-heavy, perhaps. Sort of a lot of highly influential players, but not really a pyramid underneath them. But uh, McQuaid, McDade, and Armstrong are the players that are there. We, I would love to see Tommy Martin as vice-captain push up as a team leader, but there's no real spot there just now. Zayanetti, of course, has left, and McDade, or Armstrong, looks like, sorry, has gone in there to uh, replace him. Uh, McKay has got up to a highly influential player. I love that McGurk, our new centre-back, has come straight in as an influential player, and we can see everybody else there. Uh, a little bit a little bit annoyed that the likes of Miss Kelly, Turpy, and Picasso are in, well, they're not really... Well, not that they, they don't favour me. They're not that they're against me, but you'd think they'd uh, be kind of pro me a little bit. And the social groups, again, we, we're really struggling to get, the, get the, the dressing room together in sort of one core group, aren't we? But... It's not too bad. I mean, at least there's not too there's only new signings that haven't really found a home yet. So hopefully it'll, as I keep saying, it'll come together. But it is what it is. And if it doesn't come together, it's not the end of the world for us. Now let's have a look at what we're expected to do this season. We are expected to win the league. We're expected to make the playoff at the Champions League at a minimum. Job done. We're already in the group stage of that. Last season, of course, that we'll have that automatic group stage qualification, having dropped the league down to 11th in the coefficients last season. Uh, we will be in a playoff again next season, even if we win the league. And nothing else is important. So we just everything towards the league, and we'll we'll do what we do in the cups, and you know rotate, put some uh, youngsters in there, some players that need match time, and uh, just get let them get a feel for some uh, for some football. So that is that. Now the dense gut Premiership season preview. We are, as you would imagine, the heavy favourites ahead of Linfield and Larn. Then it's fifty to one is fourth. Look at that. It's Cole Rain who we play today in Carrick Rangers as well. And we can see everybody else going down there. Bainbridge Town was the only team to come uh, to come up last season. 
Crusaders uh, beat, I think it was Cliftonville in a playoff. Now, uh, the Dream 11 is basically, well, it's not us this time, actually. There is, uh, there, so it's a bit of a kick in the face to Rory Hill, isn't it? Or Roy Hill, I think it is, actually. He didn't get picked in the team of the uh, team of the league. If we look at the key players, Armstrong and Dylan Lake, two best players in the league. And quite a few other ex-players here, uh, Gareth Wilson and McGreevy for uh, for Linfield. None of these guys would make our team now, of course. Curtis Coyle for Coleraine, if we keep going down. McNally, was he out at one point? McNally? No, I don't think he was. Um, Charlie Gornay, who we definitely had at one point. Uh, who else is down here? We go down. Will Hall was uh, was ours for a number of seasons as well. So quite a few uh, of our ex-players are still considered key players in the league, which I think shows exactly how much strength and depth we have and do have as a club. So that is everything. Let's not waste any time in getting this season underway. I'm excited to have a look at some of these new players. We're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation from Carrick Rangers, a team that has given us trouble in the past. And let's have a look at the team we're sending out first time around here. So in goal, it is going to be Young. Robbie Young, our new goalkeeper. He potentially is very, very good. So let's hope that uh, he has a good game for us. Surgeon's going to be making his debut as well at left back on loan from Celtic this season. Kid. Uh, we'll have a look at all these player attributes so you can see how guys are developing. Kid, who was at times brilliant last season. McGurk, our ball-playing centre-back, is going to be making a debut in this one. And Roy Hill, who is still the number one right back. We couldn't really get Monaghan back on loan. Um, so we'll kind of let that let that lay for now and see see where where the uh, the window takes us. Resnicek is going to be playing as the deep line playmaker. Now Resnicek has made big progress. He's ready to play uh that more defensive role in Europe. So that's that's excellent. That's definitely something I wanted to get done in this preseason. Miss Kelly is going to be partnering him in midfield. Down the right, it's going to be Key and Scully. Uh, through the middle, it's going to be Anthony Armstrong. Out left, it's going to be Martin McKay. And it's going to be Aaron McDade. Of course it is. Our goal scoring extraordinaire up front. On the bench, Arms, uh, Amstatter, who we will probably give a game to in the second game. Uh, Tommy Martin's on the bench, along with Weatherup, what the youngster that came through our academy, a promising fullback. De Lauro, if he makes a debut, it'll be from the bench in this one. Uh, Napoleon, of course, one of our stars for a long, long time now. Martin Brady, who is just a very useful player for us as well. And Holder, who could also make a debut in this one from the bench. All right, so we can see the team sheets here. Michael Keane, who came through our academy, is playing for them. Uh, a couple of other useful players that have been around the league for a little while, but we've seen them before. We should be able to get the better of them here. Uh, let's just go out there, relax. The result will come, and hopefully we'll put on a very good opening game experience for the fans here. All right, and here we go. Brand new season gets underway. It's... Uh, it's always exciting, isn't it? We, we we should, you know, as ever, this should be our best team we've ever had. Uh, you know, we get more money year on year. The loss of Zayanetti is obviously disappointing. I'm recording this before the transfer special went has gone out. So I haven't, I don't know exactly how you guys feedback or what your thoughts are on that ball across for Hill. It's a Hill for Miss Kelly. And what was that six minutes in? Miss Kelly has smacked in a winner. Well, let's hope it's a winner. He smacked in the first goal of the season even. And uh, it's 1-0 which is excellent. Yeah, I do think the fact that we we got Young in before Zayanetti left, yeah, I, I'm hoping that you guys kind of agree that we, we got a good fee, a good replacement, and I think everybody kind of wins. It might be one of those few transfers that genuinely works out for everybody. Hill with a throw for Scully. Scully gets past one. Can Scully pull it back? He goes himself straight into the goalkeeper's hands. And we go again. Let's give them some praise. Armstrong with a corner. Ball in near Poe. Oh, someone's gone down there. It's a, a push in the back. It's going to be McDade with a chance. Still, he's our best penalty taker, which surprises me a little bit. Can he open his season that count? Yes, he can. McDade, and that'll be his 200th league goal of his career as well, I believe. Yes, it is. He finished last season on 199. So, I mean, what a goal scorer McDade has been in the Irish Premiership. I don't think he's 25 yet, and he has 200 goals in the league. That is ridiculous. Not all of them, of course, are with us. He did have some before he got to us. Not many. 24 and 200 league goals. He could very easily end up with 1,000 league goals, couldn't he? But uh, anyway, I don't think the save's going to go on for quite long enough for that to happen. McGurk stands over a free kick for Scully. Scully to Reznicek. Forward there for oh, for, uh, for McKay, for Scully, and it's a save. And we'll have another corner. 
Last time we had one of these, of course, we won a penalty. What can we do this time? Armstrong goes back post. It is over the top by... Was it McDade or was it Miss Kelly? I couldn't really see. Armstrong with another chance from a corner. It's McGurk. Oh, and he is an absolute beast in the air. And that's it's pretty much that and the fact he's a bit of a ball player are the two reasons why we've got him in here. But we could be in a little bit of trouble on the break. Kid gets back. Oh, I love Kid. He is so good. He's got, just blocking. The last uh, desperation blocks like that. He's absolutely superb. We come back the other end now. It's end to end. McKay, can he pull it back? No, it's a good block from their defender and Keane just turns and smacks it into the fans to get it as far away as possible. 35 minutes gone. Ball forward. Hill picks it up. Wide for Scully. Can Scu Look at how many. We've got four, five welders in the box. Scully, can he pick one out? He can, but Reznicek has headed it wide. We'll give it a focus. Surgeon with a throw. McKay with a flick on. It's cleared away only as far as Miss Kelly. Reznicek has it now. Wide. Oh, it's not the best. McGurk should pick that up, though. McGurk comes forward. Rest in the check. He finds him. He had a little bit of space there. McKay comes in off the wing. Can he find a finish here? He goes back to Miss Kelly. Hill on the overlap. Can Hill? Scully. Oh, it's over the bar. There's some nice football being played here, though, isn't there? And it's been a very, very good first half from us. We deserved more than two goals. Armstrong, are we going to get one? It's a flick on. It's easy for the goalkeeper. Now, was that the highlight? We've entered stoppage time. Now, for all our dominance here, a 2-1 half-time score would be a bit of an annoying thing, wouldn't it? Reznicek, though, has it. He tries to thread one through for McDade. Oh, everybody stood off it, and McDade has himself a second of the game, a second of the season. And he is, he's just picked up. He just keeps scoring in this league. I know I've said it before, but we signed him, and he has just never stopped scoring since he put on a welded shirt. He has been one of the best signings. I've ever made in football manager. I don't think I've ever known somebody to come in. And yes, he's not up to the standard in Europe. But, I mean, even if we go back to last FM, where, I mean, it's 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 uh, another Allmark, isn't it? Allmark was similar. But I don't, I don't think, I'm trying to remember back now, I have very fond memories of Allmark uh, banging in goals for us, left, right, and center. But I don't think, towards the end, when we, I don't think he kind of kept doing it, did he? I think he had a couple of down seasons. Maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but yeah, uh, McDade has just been, he's just, well, he, he, if anything, he's the welder's all mark, isn't he? And that is quite the compliment. Let's give them some more praise here. And we might, with an hour gone, start looking at making some substitutes here. Ball in, back post, held it away. And it's going to get picked up here by Hill. And what's going to happen? Hill for Scully, but the goalkeeper's off his line to claim that one. And what is going to become of this? Long ball forward. Kid is there. I mean, we haven't really had a, a look at Young in goal yet, have we? And to be honest, I'm happy for that to stay the case. Miss Kelly on a booking is making me ever so slightly nervous there. Surgeon intercepts the pass, though. Heads it down to McDade on a hat trick now, of course. He's got McKay, makes a good run in behind, and he is going to get to it first. And Martin McKay with a first goal of the season. Beats brother Ewan or whatever his name is there. And, well, he's just he's just too quick, wasn't he? He was just too quick. It was a decent first tackle, but he beat the goalkeeper to it. And, well, he couldn't really miss from there, could he? Just knocked it through his legs and found the back of the net. Completely uncontested. All right, let's make some subs here. Uh, I do want to give Weather up as much game time as we can. So let's do that. Uh, let's give DeLauro a debut in place of Miss Kelly on the booking, who's making me nervous. And do we want to give Holder a debut, or we think I want a hat trick? Let's maybe hold him back for the next one. Or if uh, McDade can get the hat trick, then maybe we'll make the sub sooner. It's probably best to hold a sub back anyway, just to be safe. Uh, yeah, I have to say, I do want to give Weather up as much game time as we can. Um. I still haven't completely decided if I want to. What we might do is, with Armstrong looking tired, we'll, let's bring Napoleon on. We'll give Holder a proper debut. We might even start him in the next one. And here we go, Napoleon over a free kick. It's a decent delivery, and it's bouncing around, and McDade does have his hat trick. Well, I'd be happy to take him off now, but uh, 
while in stoppage time and having used our sub that's not going to happen but Aaron McDade starts the season with a hat trick seems appropriate doesn't it and goalkeeper made a decent save but McDade couldn't miss that and it's 5-0 and we're not done yet there is about two and a half minutes of stoppage time left. De Lauro, our first sight of him, and it's a good first sight. Makes a nice tackle to win possession back. Are we going to get a sixth here? Ball forward. McDade's in again. Can McDade get four in the opening game of the season? He pulls it back, and it's Mc... Oh, it's bouncing around. Still there for McDade. De Lauro in there for Napoleon. Napoleon for Reznicek for McKay. Oh, looking for McDade. And it is cleared away. And that is a very, very promising first up performance from us. A McDade hat trick. McKay with a goal as well. And somebody else must have got one. Miss Kelly, of course, who opened the scoring for us. Uh, we're going to have to say don't get complacent. But that was very, very impressive for a first game. So there we go, as you would expect. That does put us top of the table. Linfield and Lahn and Coleraine, the top. So all four of the favourites for the league uh, have all won there. But there's only really one team that's going to win this league, isn't it? And if it's if it's not us, then something's gone horribly wrong. So we can see all the debutants there. A debut, a debut, a hat trick on the first game of the season for uh, what's his face there, McDade. And guys, that is that. Wait right there. We'll be back. We'll rotate the team, probably all 10 outfield players, maybe even the goalkeeper as well. And we'll come back and face Coleraine. Okay, welcome back. We've had about two weeks pass since uh, that opening game. I didn't realize it was such a big gap, but uh, transfer window is still going. You can see the playoff round for the Champions League is there. We've also had quite a few draws for the Cups. So we've got Ballyclare Comrades. We haven't played in a few seasons in the League Cup. We have got uh, Ballyclare Cop. No, that's who I just said that, didn't I? Uh, there's an echo in here. We've got Linfield in the first round of the Wafer Cup. So that's a bit uh, tough. And the County Antrim Shield, it is Belfast Celtic that we've got in the first round. So those draws have happened. We have had a few bids come in for some of our players. Uh, Reznicek is the main one. I can see here expecting a 5-3-2 from Coleraine. And he does have a 3.7 million release fee in his contract. So um, I've been trying to get them to sort of get 3.6 plus a 50% sell-on. They're not going for that. So we will just try and offer him a new contract, I think. Um, having spent so much time trying to get him into in position to, that he can play in Europe, um, we might just uh, bite the bullet and offer him a new contract. He's on, what's he on right now? Five, or just over five grand, so it should be fine. Uh, so this is the team we're sending out. We are not making all complete changes, but we are making a few. I want to do next match only here as well. So with Amstada in goal, he is, of course, the backup goalkeeper who potentially could be as, the, the best goalkeeper at the club. Ellis, who is coming back from injury, he's going to get the start at left back. It'll be Lewis, who I do want to use more this season. He's going to partner Volga, who will be playing as not a ball player in this one, our young German centre back. And it will be Burian, the Czech right back, going at, uh, at right back for this one. Atwell's going to come in and play the deep line playmaker. He's going to partner the Australian Adam Tomo Thompson in, uh, in midfield. It'll be Brady going down wide right. Armstrong's going to keep his place in the team. That is because we've promised him first team football, so I want to make sure we keep that promise. And Dylan Lake will be going down the left, and it will be the new man up front. It'll be Venton Holder. I tell you what, he could score a lot of goals for us this season. Let's see if he can get a goal-scoring debut. So we do face uh, Curtis Coyle again in this one, away from home to Coleraine. They are they were fourth favourites in the league, weren't they? All right, let's go with let's leave them to no doubt why. Uh, yeah, so they're they're obviously a decent team. So we don't want to we don't take anybody for granted. Um, but yeah, you'd like to think that this again will be another game that we can get a good result in. And again, have a look at some new players here. So yeah, Burian is of course unhappy at having a, a, a bid from uh, from Palmer rejected. I am reluctant to sell him until we can get another right back in. There's a decent ball across, and it is just over. Was it Armstrong on the end of it? I think. Uh, yeah, if we can get somebody in, I, I'm reluctant to have Weather Up as our sort of main backup. We do have the likes of uh, De Lauro, of uh, Tomo, who could play right back quite easily if we wanted to retrain them. But I don't really want to do that because I want them. And it's Armstrong. Was that a save or was it a crossbar? Uh, I want them to be, I want those two in particular to be our midfield. So I'm, I'm very cautious and reluctant to, to start training, uh, to start training them to, to be a right back as well um so we'll just we'll wait and see what happens with Burian. and when the transfer window closes it may be one of those where he just realizes he's happy here after all and and gets on with things um but yeah i mean we're half an hour into this game here and we well other than hitting potentially with if it was the post that we hit or if it was the goalkeeper's safe we haven't really seen too much from us 
And we're in behind here. Lewis has mucked it up. Amstatter has mucked it up. And we've been saved by an offside flag. So that is quite lucky, you would say. Brady is looking nervous. Now, Brady, I believe, is club captain on the day. So... I mean, it's not great if your captain's looking nervous. Armstrong with a decent ball in, but it's headed away. Dylan Lake with plenty of time to get that. Thompson's down the line if he wants to use him. Lake goes himself. He is, of course, left-footed, so he's going to need to do something creative, and he's won a penalty. Well, that'll do, won't it? Atwell's going to take it. Now, have we seen Atwell take a penalty before? I have a feeling I have, and he missed it. I remember now, I have. It was an off-camera game, and he put it past the post. This time, he does the exact exactly what he did last time. Exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a replay. It was that same side. It looked like the exact same penalty. And this, needless to say, has not been good enough, has it? Uh, so let's take some pressure off them here because there's obviously something not quite going right. We'll pump our fists. We'll say we have faith in them. And we'll start looking at what we need to do to change things up here, I think. What we could do, first port of call, is slow things down. Look for overlaps. And see if that works for us. And we've got a highlight very early in the second half. Let's see if we can go and, and win this ball back. Ball forward. It is won by Vogler. Armstrong has it. Back to Burian. Cross field pass. He finds Lake. Atwell now. Owes us for the missed penalty, of course. Ellis comes forward. Ellis with a ball for Lake. We've got players queuing up in the middle. It's back post. It is Venton Holder on the boot. He does get a goal. It's not a classic. It looked as though potentially the cross was put towards his own goal by maybe even McGowan at the defender. The goalkeeper's palmed it out and straight to holder. But we'll see if that is actually what happens here. Nice ball from Ellis. Nice run from Lake. Ball in. Oh no, the goalkeeper is, has palmed it out. So apologies to McGowan there. Goalkeeper should have done it. Well, he had to do better with that cross, didn't he? And holder with a gift. And he has uh, made no mistake with that gift either, which is always good to see. So 1-0. It's a game that we've dominated. Hopefully we can go and turn that domination into goals now. Ball forward. It's going to get picked up by Lewis. Back there for Atwell. Ellis. Can he find Lake down the line again? There is space there. We have done that again. Dylan Lake crossing. Back post Brady's there. And it's, uh, well, how many times do we say it? Martin Brady at the back post. He's uh, The media would dub him the new, the new Kyle Fisher, wouldn't they? Headers at the back post. It's just what Brady does. And Dylan Lake with a second assist as well. Whips in the cross. You don't beat Brady. And it's a really good header, isn't it? Goalkeeper's not really any chance at all. And the second half has been much better than the first. And we're 2-0 up. Linfield and Lahn are both won. This is a, a game in hand. The rest of the league played on the weekend. This is the Tuesday. Ball in. Holder's there. And Holder has himself a second. He's going to score a lot of goals, isn't he? If we play him in the league anyway, he's going to score a lot of goals. Let's hope he can carry that form into Europe for us, because he could be he could be a game changer. We have luck, haven't we? That player up front that can that can just bang in the goals for us and win us win us that game in Europe when we when we defend well. We thought we had someone like that with Davis, but he was a disaster. Picasso's done a decent job. But he's, he's not that all-round presence, is he? Picasso, we can see him on the bench here. He's a good finisher, but that is... He's more of a deep-lying forward. He's more of a link-up man. If we can get... I uh, know what I wanted to do here is... Speaking of Picasso and link-up man... Actually, let's go into tactics and do it. All right, what I want to do is bring Picasso on. Just give Armstrong a rest. He's had his start now. He's going to be happy. And we might bring DeLauro on as well. And we might bring him on for Atwell, who is Mr. Penalty, not having a great day. And give DeLauro and Thompson, the two youngsters, a chance. We've brought Weather up on it right back as well. Again, just games that are comfortable. Trying to give him as much game time as we can. And that is that. I was going to bring uh, Turpy in for this one. But unfortunately, he's picked up. Another, he's just picking up a lot of injuries. A lot of niggly, like sort of two, three week injuries. So it's really stunting his progress for us or his development. But despite missing a penalty, we've been much better in the second half. We'll tell him, well done. We'll say well done. We didn't praise them after the first one. So there we go. Hold us ends. Harlan and Wolfwald as top. We maybe we dodged a few bullets there, didn't we? The offside goal for them in that first half. So it could have it could have gone wrong. Um, we'll just say that. 
but it didn't and that's the important thing holder with a double on Dabu, which is always nice to see and guys that will do it for today you can see there it's the three three uh, main contenders up top all of us with a very impressive goal difference after two games as well and we'll be back next time we'll come back as we did last season when the champions league starts so i'll record the draw and then we'll come back for the first game obviously we don't know who that's going to be yet it's usually around that lan game so it if, if uh, the FM gods are with us, we'll come back for a Champions League game in LAN, but we'll just see what you know where, where the draw happens and, and well, when the draw happens, where all the games fall. And that will be next episode, guys. So until then, I've been Aussie Villain. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.